will finish today. So Monte Carlo simulation is very powerful, very powerful mathematically. You can you even from starting from nuclear explosions to even traffic, everything. So many things can be analyzed using simulation. Okay, so Monte Carlo simulation is continuous variable. That's all. Other simulations, the variables may not be continuous. The variables will be discrete, discrete event type simulation. So basic mathematics is same. So I don't know if somebody is interested in projects in this area. Well, so the general procedure for measurement uncertainty we have already learned. So generally there are two stages: the formulation stage and the computation stage. So first stage is the formulation. You express the measurement as a function of the various input quantities or the sources or the influence quantities. The technical term is correct term is influence quantities. Then develop a model relating measurement to input quantities. So you try to develop a model connecting this output variable to the input variable. Then obtain estimates of input quantities and the uncertainties. So each input quantity, what is the standard uncertainty that you try to determine. So up to this is formulation stage, then the solution stage. Solve the model to estimate the measurement in terms of the estimates of the input quantities. So what is the measurement? So for example, area equal to length into breadth. So you calculate the measurement. Determine the uncertainty of the measurement in terms of the uncertainties of the estimates of the input quantities. So now you determine the uncertainty of the measurement in terms of the uncertainties of the estimates of the input quantities. So each input quantity you have an estimate, you have already estimated its uncertainty. So now try to compute the uncertainty of the measurement in terms of this. So that is using the law of propagation of uncertainty. So this is the approach which we followed. So for this, what are the assumptions we made during this analysis? We assume that the nonlinearity of f, the function connecting the input variables to the measurement, is insignificant. The central limit theorem applies. That means no single source dominates the distribution. Okay, so all if there are a large number of small sources, then central limit theorem is valid. But if there is a one big uncertainty source, then and that is not normal, then the output distribution will also not be normal. Then welch satellite formula was assumed adequate. Okay, so these are the basic assumptions we have made. So we propagated the uncertainties of x1, x2, x3, having standard uncertainties x, u of x1, u of x2, u of x3, using this functional relationship between the measurement y and capital X is the vector x1, x2, x3. And we determine the estimate of y and its standard uncertainty u of y. So this is what we have done. So there is an alternative approach which uses Monte Carlo simulation. So what is the idea of simulation? For example, you toss a coin. You repeat n number of times. Count the number of heads x. The probability of head can be calculated from the experimental results, not based on any theory, as x by n. So this is simulation. So now we need to know what is the uncertainty in this probability of heads. That is again based on binomial distribution fractions. P is a fraction. I don't know, those who are taking quality control, I think it's code for you, isn't it? 
So there you will learn control charts for, okay, X bar and R charts are control charts for mean. Then we have control charts for fraction non-conforming. So that is same thing. So there in control charts, we generally use three sigma limits, plus or minus three. We assume you choose 99.73 percent confidence. But in uncertainty, normally we don't go for 99.73. We choose 95 percent or, okay, depends on the application. So similar approach can we do with measurement uncertainty computation. So okay, another example for a little more complex example for determining the value of pi using simulation. So consider a sector inscribed in a unit square. So this is zero, zero, this is one zero, this is zero one, this is one one. So in the unit square, so you have a sector. So pi by four equal to area of sector by area of square. Okay, this is a part one fourth of a circle. This is one fourth of the square with side two two. Now suppose we have a mechanism which throws darts over the square. Uniformly distributed between minus one to one in the x direction and minus one to one in the y direction. Okay, or we are taking the sector quarter fraction means minus zero from zero to one in the x direction, zero to one in the y direction. And it should be randomly and uniformly distributed. So what is the probability of hitting the sector that is inside the sector? So that probability is proportional to area of the sector divided by area of the square, that is pi by four. So what you have to do is, if you have a mechanism which can shoot darts, so you just have to count the number of hits and misses. And the ratio of hits divided by the total number of throws will be equal to pi by four. So pi equal to four into hits by number of hits plus misses, total number of throws. Thus, we can experimentally determine the value of pi. So you can do this in Excel. So you can, in Excel, you can generate random numbers between zero and one. So x is one variable, y is another variable, r is root of x square plus y square. So if it is less than, one, it is a hit, otherwise it is outside the sector, so it is not a hit. So from first trial, we have one hit, so the value of pi is one, so uh, four. Pi by four equal to one, so pi equal to four. Then second throw, random numbers were generated, x and y. So R is root of x square plus y square. So 1.239 was outside one, greater than one, so it is not a hit. Value of pi is, now you have one hit, one failure. So value of pi is pi by four equal to one by two. So pi equal to four times that is two. So like that you repeat for a large number of times and determine the value of pi. So, what all do we need? We need a random number generator. That is the tool that is required. Then we can do such an analysis easily. So, in calculator, you can generate random numbers using shift rand. Or in Excel, equal to rand within brackets generates random numbers between zero and one. So every time you press F9 and another piano random number will be generated. So then uh, you have to combine all the trials. You have to keep repeating this large number of times and for that several add-ins are available. Some free add-ins are available here. 
we can try if uh, that's it. So this will tabulate and compute the average confidence intervals, etc. Percentiles it will calculate. Or you can use MATLAB or Skylab, SCILAB, which is a MATLAB equivalent but open source. And then there is GNU Octave, which is also a MATLAB clone. So there you have to write uniform rant between 0 to 1, 1 to 1000, from 1 to 1000. So this is an array of rant numbers is generated. So the Monte Carlo approach, basic idea you have got now. So now let us apply it to measurement uncertainty communication. So generate a value at random from each of the distributions, from the distribution for each xi. Evaluate the corresponding y. So each input quantity, you generate one value randomly according to the appropriate distributions you have identified. And determine the value of y. Repeat the process m times. And what we get is a distribution for y. We get the empirical distribution of y. Compute the statistics of y. What is its average? What is its 95% percent percentiles, etc. you can calculate. And that can be used instead of the coverage intervals you calculate using calculus. Statistics of y. The histogram of y values is the PDF of y. The mean of y values is the measurement result. The standard deviation of y values is the combined standard uncertainty of y. 2.75 and 97.5 percentiles are the endpoints of a 95 percent coverage interval for measurement. So what we have done is we have propagated the distributions through this function. So your input variables will maybe having different distributions. So you compute y the measurement using the various randomly generated input quantities and we get a distribution of y, the measurement. Okay, so we can do a problem. So, okay, the big, the, uh, the advantage is that, it may be there after this. So a bottle of medicine weighs 50 gram, distributed uniformly between plus or minus 10 gram. After emptying the medicine, the bottle weighed 20 gram, normally distributed with standard deviation 2 gram. Estimate that the amount of medicine originally in the bottle is standard uncertainty and 95% coverage in Bravan using calculus and Monte Carlo simulation. So Excel worksheet, you can make this worksheet. So the total weight is uh, Okay, it is 50 gram uniformly distributed between plus or minus 10 gram. That means it is uniformly distributed between 40 to 60. So to get that distribution, we have to use this function in Excel. 40 plus 20, and bottle weight is 20 gram, normally distributed standard deviation 2 gram. So since it's normally distributed, you have to take normous inverse of rand and 20 plus 2 into, so 2 is the standard uncertainty, standard deviation. So 20 plus 2 into normous inverse of rand. So amount of medicine is the resultant, is total weight minus bottle weight. So you just keep on generating this. And then finally we have to, to get the percentiles, you have to sort that and get the 50 percentile is approximately the average. We can take the average of that. Or and 2.5 percentile and 97.5 percentile cover will correspond to the two coverage intervals for with the 95 percent confidence. So using calculus, standard uncertainty is 6.11 and coverage interval is 17.78 to 42.22. Using Monte Carlo invariance simulation, so one trial I got 6.17, another trial I got 6.12. And the histogram was looking like this. So since 
it is uniform plus normal so what you get is a resultant is not really normal it's a mixture of uniform and normal distribution so the law of propagation of uncertainty and the distribution we cannot assume really that the resultant is normally distributed. So that's why there's a difference between the two coverage intervals. Okay, so 17.8 to 42.2. Let us using Monte Carlo simulation, the coverage interval is between 19.3 to 40.8. So this is smaller. So anyway, the results are different from that of calculus, assuming normal distribution. So here we don't have to make any assumption of normal distribution. So this is a problem. Radius of a circle is measured as 10 mm with standard uncertainty uniformly distributed between so minus. Between plus or minus 1 mm. Compute the standard uncertainty and an 80% coverage interval for the area of the circle using Monte Carlo simulation taking 10 trials. Okay, I mean in class I used to do this. In online, this is difficult to verify whether we are done really or we are just uh, <laughs> because if you make one worksheet in Excel, everybody can copy that worksheet. So I am not giving this as an exercise. So those who are interested can learn, try for themselves. And so Monte Carlo simulation standard uncertainty is that six point three four. Okay, both are more or less matching. So, a gum extension is there. Supplement 1 to the guide to the expression of uncertainty measurement. Supplement 1 is propagation of distributions using the Monte Carlo method. So, for more details, please.